All right, so we built out our loop in the last couple of videos, and now we need to define the final step that happens after the loop is completed. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna drag a screen element to the canvas, and we'll just call this screen two. And then I'm gonna drag the display text again to the loop or the, the screen. I'll just call it display text two. And I'll just say you've iterated or you've now iterated through your first loop collection. And maybe I can make that bigger, like size 20 or something. Awesome. So we'll press done. And now I'm going to connect the loop to the screen. So we already have one path that's for each item. We're going to go to the assignment and then the screen. And all we have to do is just connect the loop again, just drag it and connect it to the second screen. And by default, because we already defined the first path, this after last item selection is automatically chosen. So in many cases, uh, your flow will be, I guess if you're using a loop or you need to do an update or something like this, um, your flow will be pretty simple. And many times the loop after the last item, it'll just be like an update element. And you're gonna update all the records in Salesforce that you uh, made changes to in your loop. So a lot of times, I guess after the last item, will route to the very last item of the flow. It doesn't have to be that way though. So. You know, if I wanted to, I could drag a bunch more elements to the canvas after this and connect screen two to them. Like if I wanted to, well, I don't want to because it'll take too long to customize. But if I wanted to drag like four or five create or update elements here, or maybe several other screens, I can definitely do that. So the flow doesn't have to end when the loop ends. Although you'll, you'll notice in your Salesforce career that oftentimes it kind of logically makes sense for it to do so. So let's press save. And we'll just debug the flow one more time, and then we'll kind of end our primer on loops. And I'll close out the other loop primer. So I'm gonna press debug. Everything's gonna run just as it did before. And again, we see that we start at the beginning of the loop with the first account that was found, um, or I guess the first account that was in the collection. And so we'll go next, 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 next. We'll just go all the way through. And the key thing that I want to show you here is that, again, once we get to our last account, which is number 15, and press next, um, we see that screen. It's like you've now iterated through your first loop connection or collection. And so when I go back and look at the loop or the, the screen flow, we see that this screen um, was shown after we had finished going through every single account. And that's really it. So the key concepts from this introduction introductory lecture or concept overview about loops is that you always will need a collection when you're working with loops and that loops are kind of like a, a way to go through that entire collection and do some sort of logic. So you can imagine a filing cabinet, um, which is your collection and you use a get records to fill up the filing cabinet. And then when you're ready to do something to the records in the filing cabinet, you open the drawer, that's your loop. And then for each item, you take out you know, your account records or whatever they are, and you can define really any logic that you like using the logical operators and interaction elements over here on the left. And then uh, once you've finished, um, you, know, you imagine you, you take out the first account record, you count it and you read the name and you put it back in. And then once you've done that 15 times, you just close the filing cabinet up and then you can move on to the rest of the flow. And in this case, that's just a simple screen that's like, hey, congratulations, you went through your first loop. And so I hope this was helpful. We're gonna jump into um, the challenge five story now where we're gonna help Pedro uh, actually iterate through a loop or well, iterate through a collection of opportunities. So I'll see you there and uh, can't wait to show you more about loops.